Chapter 4 Josh floated past Astrid, laughing. She rolled her eyes and laughed with him. She'd fashioned a pair of shorts from a puff of clouds, and it looked like a diaper. They were taking a scenic route back to her father's cloud castle, though Astrid chose to walk. Walk with me, she said, though she knew it wouldn't do any good. Why walk when you can float? he asked, circling her. She taught him how to do it, and he picked it up very quickly. Flying was the first thing her father taught her. She hoped Nauki could figure out what happened to Josh. Before Josh sacrificed himself to destroy Dargonius, Nauki had said he didn't know what would happen to Josh if he died. Astrid had only recognized what Josh had become because he'd been reborn from the clouds. Nauki had told her about that process when he recounted how he, in turn, became a nature demon. You had to die to be reborn. It wasn't a pleasant thought, and she feared having to do the same thing if it ever became her turn to take her father's place. As they grew closer to the castle, Astrid grew uneasy. The castle, as well as the cloud on which it resided, was a darker gray. The clouds around it were lighter, but this one looked... sick. Astrid flew ahead, leaving Josh behind. Dad? she called after opening the grand door. She stood in a hall that branched in different directions. From the outside, and from far away, the castle looked like a giant puffy cloud. Inside, however, it looked like a regular castle made of brick and stone. On most days, she had to search for her father, but today he stood at the end of the hall, directly in front of her. He wore a long blue and gray robe, with a light blue beard that reached down to his stomach. He looked like what you would expect a wizard to look like, which was appropriate since he used to be one. Today, he looked like a sick wizard. Astrid, he said. What happened to you? she asked, walking up to him. I just started feeling under the weather, no pun intended. He laughed, and then suddenly stopped when he noticed Josh. What on earth? Josh walked up to them, still wearing that ridiculous cloud diaper. Guess who's back? I don't believe my eyes. Astrid couldn't remember the last time her father had looked this dumbstruck. Joshua, you are a nature demon. I guess we'll have to fight for who gets to take over, Astrid joked, poking Josh with her elbow. He smiled grimly. What's wrong? she asked. Nothing. I just wish I had some clothes. Astrid was surprised at how lean he looked without a shirt. He clearly worked out when he was alive. She tore her eyes away from his six-pack to ask her father, Do you have any more clothes here? Of course. Upstairs. There are also spare rooms. Take your pick. Astrid took Josh's hand and led him up the spiral stone staircase. He seemed to be smiling, but there was something behind that smile Astrid couldn't grasp. It all felt like a show. They reached the top floor and headed into a large room. There were no windows, but there were a few sculpted holes near the ceiling that let in plenty of light as well as a breeze. Josh walked up to a wardrobe and went through the nice selection of robes, shirts, and pants. He put on the shirt, then turned to Astrid. Can you turn around? he asked. Why? I need to get rid of the cloud diaper so I can put on the pants. I already saw you naked. Yeah, but I wasn't prepared for that. Now I am. Astrid rolled her eyes and turned around toward the entrance. Okay, Josh said a few seconds later. He now wore a white t-shirt and tan pants, along with black slippers. Better? she asked. Much better, he replied, though he still sounded weird. They headed back downstairs and ate lunch with Nauki in a dining room that matched the rest of the castle's decor. 
all stone. There were red rugs scattered throughout, but it still felt cold and empty. Josh had been inside this castle only once before, during the battle with Nauki and his vampire and werewolf minions, but that had been a year ago. He looked around now, but with the air of a scared kitten. We can start training whenever you're ready, Astrid told him, trying to lighten the mood. He nodded absently. When can I learn to invade people's dreams, like how Nauki kept doing to me when we first met? Nauki laughed. That's not really a nature demon trick. I learned that in my wizarding days. Oh. Josh sounded disappointed. I can try to teach you that, though, Nauki added. Josh perked up. I just want to visit my parents, and maybe Estevan. Why? Astrid asked. Because I miss them. Are you sure that's wise? Nauki asked. Think of how you reacted when I invaded your dreams. Well, I'm not going to try and scare them the way you did me. I just want them to know I'm all right. It's the least you could do. I died because of you guys. His voice started to sound angry toward the end. Astrid looked pleadingly toward her father. I guess it wouldn't hurt to teach you something, Nauki finally said. It's not really that hard. I could probably teach you too, Astrid, if you want. Sure, she said, delighted. Josh tried to stop the tears that flowed after he returned to his room, but they just kept coming. He sat on his bed and stared at the hole in the upper wall. He could see the upper atmosphere, and that only made him lonelier. He cried more. A knock on the door startled him. He wiped away the tears and said, Come in. Nauki stepped in and stood there. Are you all right, Josh? No, he said, giving up the pretense. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be a nature demon. Nauki walked over to the bed and sat next to him. Can I tell you a secret? Josh nodded. I didn't really want to be one either. I find that hard to believe. I thought you and Rockney practically competed for this. It was no secret I was Dad's favorite, but the main reason I took over was because I was afraid of what Rockney would do with the power if he got it. Josh looked at the man for a moment. You felt obligated? That's it exactly, yes. Sometimes, in life, we're faced with choices. These choices can be scary and difficult. They're put there to test us. The ones we make can reveal what kind of people we are inside. Take you, for instance. When Rockney was blasting me with fire, you made the choice to jump between us and save me. Josh said nothing, only listened. That showed me that you're selfless and brave. You're already a better nature demon than me, but just because you've been reborn as one doesn't mean you have to be one. I can't go back to my old life, Josh said. I can't touch land like this. I know, but that doesn't mean you have to stay with us and do what we do. Well, I can't exactly go back to my books and music, or to my family, unless I possess someone, like you did with Trick and Estevan. I would never do that to someone. No offense. None taken. I know I've possessed a few people without their consent. I don't know what to tell you, Josh, but I want you to know you are not obligated to follow in my footsteps. Astrid is doing so by her choice. You can do whatever you want. In the meantime, you can stay with us. Josh smiled and wiped more tears away. Thank you. Nauki stood and started toward the door. Before he got there, though... He collapsed. Astrid! Josh screamed as he ran over to the man. She ran up to them a few seconds later and said, What's happening? Nauki looked wide-eyed at Josh. Something's wrong. I haven't been feeling well today. When did it start? Astrid asked. An hour ago. 
That's when I pulled Josh out of the cloud. Oh, dear, Naoki said. I think that may be it. That would explain my current state. What do you mean? Astrid asked. Help me to the tower. Josh and Astrid helped him up, and Astrid teleported them all to the tower. The room was small and round. Wind blew through the tiny holes in the walls with a whistle. In the center of the room was a pedestal holding a large brown book. Nauki stumbled up to it and flipped through the pages. What is that? Josh asked. Think of it as a nature demon handbook. I've gone through it at least once since taking over as nature demon after my father's death, but I sometimes forget things. I believe there is a clause in here about two nature demons existing at the same time. Astrid helped him stand. She'd never seen her father so weak before, though she'd only met him a year ago. What about the original nature demons? she asked. Before you guys took over, weren't they all nature demons at the same time? Only by name. Only one had gone through the rebirth and ruled as king while the others waited their turns. But something happened to their bloodline that caused them to start dying out. Those in waiting were unable to survive the rebirth, leaving the king alone and dying as well. That's when they outsourced the position, so to speak. They sought out other creatures to which they could pass on their own magic. As far as I can tell, whatever afflicted them doesn't affect me. And then I came along and screwed everything up, Josh said, looking at the floor. Nauki weakly patted him on the shoulder. It's not your fault. It's mine. If I hadn't cursed Astrid's mother while she was pregnant with our daughter, you wouldn't have heroically taken it upon yourself to try and lift the curse, thereby taking on some of my magic. It's all on me, my boy, not you. Josh grinned. Thanks. Well, what do we do to fix this? Astrid asked, breaking up the bonding moment. I feel like we're wasting time talking. Nauki looked at her. It warms my heart to know you're worried about me but I'm certain we can find a way to reverse what's happening. He found the page he was looking for and read the words. They were written in weird, swirling shapes Astrid couldn't understand. You're going to have to teach me how to read this one day, she said. Noted, her father replied, though he didn't appear to like what he read. Oh dear, it appears I was correct about one thing. There can only be one ruling nature demon at a time but that seems to only be a formality. It has nothing to do with my illness. What does? Astrid asked. Nauki looked at Josh. Even in death, Mr. DeBelko, you have the ability to leech life.